here it is my garden and all its glory on top of a six foot ladder. <laughs> it's the only way I know how to show off this monstrosity. And um, yeah, there it is. So what do we have from the aerial view? Um, back over there is the birdhouse gourd plant and then you can see that it stretches all the way across over to the other side where it meets up with the kook melon, which is way over here. Okay, this is the shade cloth for my very fussy tomatoes that I discovered need a little break from the sunshine. Um, <laughs> an out of control Thai basil plant. Look at that thing, it's huge. It's maybe two plants in there, maybe three at most. It's crazy. I have zinnias everywhere in my garden. And right now in several spots we are in the midst from turning from summertime into fall gardening. Just waiting for the fennel. That's what this stuff is back here. It's fennel. And just waiting for it to finish um, making seeds. And uh, then we'll harvest all the seed heads and take it out and start planting things like kale, broccoli, cauliflower, that sort of thing. Um, my Swiss chard's coming back. Right there. Yay. Yeah, all this yummy Thai basil. It's beautiful and the bees love it. Uh, when we make Thai food, which is probably once a week, we come out and just grab handfuls and handfuls of this stuff. It's fantastic. The tomatoes are, of course, taking over the walkway now. Um, I've got peppers in there. I think that's actually a volunteer from last year because I did not plant whatever this is. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I think it's from last year. Um, on the other side of these tomatoes, we've got jalapenos, and I am so thrilled with how many jalapenos I have. I mean, that's just great. Uh, this poor little guy is a volunteer from somewhere, and the husband dug him up and planted him over in here now that we've got some real estate open. A little bit of sage, oh, and the Swiss chard. It was looking really miserable when it was buried by the Romas, but I chopped it all back and all sorts of new stuff coming up now. So we'll be able to get some more um, out of it yet this season before it's time to call it good for the year. Uh, this is where the Romas were. No longer. They're done. They got yanked. We'll uh, amend and put, uh, like I said, brassicas or something. Okay, this crazy thing is fennel. And just waiting for those seed heads to finish forming. Um, I don't think I've got any in... I think I harvest everything that was ready. I sure don't see any. Here's some that are just coming in. They're starting to make that transition. But yeah, it'll be nice to have all that real estate back again. All right, let's talk birdhouse gourd. <laughs> Okay, keep in mind, this is two plants, okay? It's a cross over here. This is where it meets up with my cardinal creeper, I think it was. Or oh, it's the cardinal climber, one of those two things. And I just love the foliage. It is so pretty, um, very viney. This is the cardinal creeper. And they have these beautiful little red, oh, there's one right over there. I might get tangled up by things. Here it is little red uh, flower. The hummingbirds have been coming in for it, but it has this really nice dark deep shade in here, which is great when it gets sunny. Okay, but that's not why we're here. We're here for this beast. So right here, and look, there's the husband looming. <laughs> I've got so many gourds. <laughs> it is just incredible. Ooh. I think this is the first original one that it started with. This one back here. Hi, husband. Hello. <laughs> All right, so here's the gourd from the other direction. I've got three right in there, and then <laughs> in that spot over there, there's 10. They're just all over the place. It's just, I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. I wish I had used something better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so noted for maybe next year. If I do this again next year, I might find something different to grow that's wild and crazy. This is the cashaw vine, and it's actually starting a little cashaw right there. It's so cute. But it goes over there, and it goes up 
where of course we have more cords and it goes over and then it goes down. So it actually starts way back over there and he's way over here. He's easily 20 feet already. Um, also in this cattle panel arch is this. This is my kiwi berry and it's doing really well this year. Um, he's up to about here. So um, maybe a couple more years. The kids keep asking, when are we gonna get some fruit? <laughs> I'm like, uh, three or four years from now. So we've got some cosmos in here. And oh, and some beans. I stick beans everywhere. Sweet potato vines, they are going everywhere. Did you know you can eat sweet potato vines? I had no idea. I think we might need to make some a lunch. Maybe today or tomorrow. Sweet potatoes everywhere. And okra. Getting close to, ooh. Yeah, that guy needs to come out. He's pushing it right there. But I love these flowers. They are so pretty. The ants like them too. But uh, two different types of okra in there. We've got the Clemson spineless, and then we've got, I think I planted the Jing orange. So, there he is. But it's funny, the flowers, absolutely identical. Okay, then over here we've got a, what do we have? I think this is a honey nut squash. There's a little one right there. Um, there's one hanging out right there. They're uh, kind of all over the place in there. They're mixed in with my indigo apple. Uh, was that just a big bud? No, thankfully it wasn't. <laughs> oh, but these indigo apple tomatoes are super cute with their purple shoulders. Hi, little squashies. Um, and oh, <laughs> there's another one way over there. <laughs> and um, yeah, sweet potato vine. And that is from all the way back over there. <laughs> so yeah, I think we might actually make some a lunch. There's all that crazy fennel. <sighs> and all of that uh, birdhouse gourd. Pretty crazy. There's definitely ducking, a lot more ducking now in our garden. So let's go over here. I've got more romas over here. And then we've got the pumpkin. I'm very, very pleased by this. Normally it's a big challenge to grow anything squash related here with the squash bugs. They're just terrible. Um, I've got uh, four or five pumpkin plants in there, I think. And you can just see they're dying back. I'm just hoping, I'm thrilled for that. Yay, we at least get one. All right, some Romas. This was a fantastic uh, Roma tomato this year. This, I mean, and unfortunately I don't have any name for it other than the striped Roma that my father-in-law brought me. Um, very, very good, very tasty. Kind of a pain to peel the skin off of though. Once they're ripe and um, ready for canning, yeah, they were a bit of a pain. The, the flesh sticks to the skin more than what I like. And here comes the sunshine. So all of these Romas here, we're just waiting for all the fruit to finish ripening and then we're gonna yank it, fill it in with fall stuff. I've got a lot of fall plants started inside. That'll be ready to go soon. Oh, and I just love these. These are so much fun. This is the Buena Mulata pepper plant. I got them from Baker Creek. They start purple. I mean, look how, look how vivid purple that is. <laughs> yeah, it's just great. And then it goes to this color, this kind of really weird fleshy color. <laughs> and then it goes to the orange. Okay, and then when it's ready to go, it goes, well, that plant over there is a better example. It goes red. And um, they're a little spicy, definitely more so than a jalapeno, but very beautiful to watch. Uh, this plant was the Supremo Roma, fabulous size Romas, absolutely beautiful. And it grew well, it didn't get anywhere near as much. Oh, here, we'll get this one. This one's turning. Nice, big, fat, and this one's actually a smaller one. Uh, that's Supremo, though. I'll plant more of those next year. Probably the bulk of them will be this one. A couple Cayennes that got shaded out, so they're finally growing again. Here's the poor, 
These are like just the basic Romas that I had. They're definitely done. We'll be pulling them soon, probably by the end of tomorrow. They'll be gone. Um, here's this view of the garden. Big and crazy. So let's do a walk through of our little living tunnel here. I love the little watermelon right up there at the top. <laughs> it has worked incredibly well. Um, we've got watermelon planted through it. You can see them everywhere. And um, I don't know what's going on here. This was one of the watermelon. This one's also got it. Um, brown spots. Everything's wilting. I've never grown watermelon before, so I have no idea what's going on here. But they are big, beautiful. Um, we picked one the other day. We've yet to cut into it. It's in the refrigerator cooling off. We've got vining beans going all the way up. And um, this over here, I'm super excited about this. This is what's called a Maldives melon. I have four of them. And I'm a little concerned I'm not going to get any fruit on them. I'm going to guess that they're probably a long season, uh, hot weather type of thing. So it may be next year when I actually can replant them at the proper time and maybe get some fruit off of them. Um, they were a find off of the Experimental Farm Network is where I got the seeds. Oh, and be still my heart. Oh, there's squash. Remember what I said about squash bugs? I am amazed. I've got some powdery mildew, but gosh, who cares? <laughs> uh, yes, and I've got nice big flowers. Hi, little bee. He's just hanging out, clan himself. <laughs> oh, and look at this. My one zucchini. That's definitely time to pick. But, uh, yeah, see, that's normally what I get when I do squash. So I'm amazed I've got this thing. And I finally tried the second time around. I tried the foil wrapped thing. Well, it still gets it. I'm sure I need to wrap the stem up as the plant grows, but I completely missed it. Oh, look at that big fat buddy right there. See that slug in there? Hey, honey, you want to get a slug? <laughs> He's right in there underneath the stem. Uh, then we have cucumber. I plant cucumbers everywhere, so if one gets taken down, it's no big deal. We've got some suckers that I had clipped and rooted and started growing. There's the husband again. Another squash plant that's doing fairly well. Shocking. And then here's this gem up here. <laughs> this is a kashaw. There he is. He's um, at least 10 pounds right now. I'm going for 20. That's uh, what I'm aiming for. So when we get out here, <laughs> you can see he's just hanging out up there. Ooh, there we go. Little watermelon over there. There's the husband. Oh, what is that thing? There's two of them. There's one there, and there's one back in the back. Oh, that's the leaf-footed thing. And they suck the juices out of our plants, so we might want to might want to take care of him. But yeah, I love that. It's just denting in. It's got its little bed. <laughs> It'll be fun. All right, these are dwarf tomatoes. I started these guys from seed probably mid-May, and they are heirloom styles, and they're only going to get um, three feet tall probably. And they're my backups. This is, what, the 10th of August, thereabouts? And uh, they're my secondary plantings. So I'm excited for that. I got the seeds from the guy who wrote the book, um, The uh, Epic Tomatoes. So I'm excited for that. This is Cucamelon. Um, yes, NC Tomato Man, you're correct. Um, this is cucumelon mixed with delicata squash, mixed with zinnias, mixed with beans, mixed with kale. <laughs> so it's just a plethora of all sorts of things in there. Um, not surprising, we're totally hit with worms still, despite, see there's some eggs right there. Um, despite our going after the moss, the white cabbage moss, some beans. Here's the inside of the cucamelons. I just love how this thing grows. 
it uh, it's petite and it's delicate it has all these fun little fruits all over the place I can tell though the boys have been in here because there's hardly any uh, but we definitely have cucumbers there's the view to the other side but yeah that um, these are two plants maybe yeah they're everywhere <laughs> loads of basil, we've got some habaneros over there, tomatoes everywhere of course, we've got some melons growing over here, and I believe yesterday, yep, there it is, yesterday we found some that are growing in there, here's another one right there, so we may yet get some cantaloupes this year, oh, there's another one right there, hi baby, it's exciting, so yeah, there's the uh, birdhouse gourd, ever present, Hanging out. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, I've got more okra. I've got that was another experimental farm network purchase of seeds. They got started a little bit late, but I think they have more than made up for it. And we are just, yep, right in there. I'm starting to get uh, flowers popping in. Hooray. Zinnias are overtaking the garden. Okay, this thing. I love this thing. This is a Rezha pepper. Macedonian pepper. It's got all these weird lines on it. Um, none ready in there quite yet. They're getting there though. Oh, there's one that's got a little bit of red. Peak. Oh, yeah, and I have that problem too all the time. Blossom end rot on peppers. Um, spicy. Um, between a habanero and a jalapeno would be my guess. The forest of tomatoes and ground cherries. If anybody ever tells you um, ground cherries are calm, easy plants, they're lying. <laughs> they, uh, ground cherries are crazy. And these ground cherries have had multiple haircuts, you can see. Right, right there's a cut. Um, they, they're nuts. They go all over the place. They just sprawl and sprawl. And, um, a, oh, look at all those. Kids like them. Jonathan likes them, so. It's a win. My poor collards. They got a massive haircut. I've got more growing too, so we can start fresh again. I'm excited about this. This is a holy basil, Tulsi. Um, the, it's the temperate variety um, that I grew. There's a different one over there. And I've got, well, I have more and they're getting choked out. Might have to come in and do a haircut. Here's one. Yeah, I think it's haircut time again. Cucumber, he's getting old, wilty. He's got all sorts of, I don't know, bacteria growing on him for those yellow leaves. That's okay, he already gave me like 43 pints of cucumbers. <laughs> I think I'm good. What else do we have? More zinnias, I love zinnias. Oh, it's time for blooming garlic chives. They'll bloom soon. Marigold there. This is a lipstick pepper. <sighs> I don't know if that's bug related or what. Um, black crim. See, look at that. Getting eaten. There's a hornworm in here somewhere. Almost guarantee it. Um, we've got a lot of dill on the way out. I've been clipping and clearing that out. Oregano is still doing fabulous. Hey, and we're back to the Thai basil. Let's go over to the other side. All right, the other side of the garden being all the berries. So these are the blackberries. They're just about finished up. And we planted then also blueberry row. Oh look, this one didn't get very far. Man, that just breaks your heart. That was a good looking tomato too. So blackberries on the left now, and then we've got blueberries. But <laughs> because the blueberries were so small, I figured, oh, let's plant our tomato plants in between them, which you know has worked out. We actually got some blueberries this year, like three. <laughs> it was very exciting. Um, I planted black crim tomatoes all along here, and on the other side we planted um, what was it? Japanese black trifle. It's like a almost a pear shape tomato. Let's see if I can find one that's turning. They got so huge. I'm really thinking, oh there's one in there. I'm really thinking that these black trifles um, 
and tomatoes in general really like it acidic like the blueberries do. What do you say? Uh, the blueberry plant, you can't see it anymore. Oh, we have to dig them out. Literally, it's like right here. Oh. <laughs> well, at least he's getting some sunshine. We'll give it a haircut. <gasps> wow, look at that. We actually got some raspberries. We thought we killed them all. Well, not us, but the weather. <gasps> oh, and a butterfly. I love echinacea for the butterflies. Here he is. So exciting. And we've been seeing monarchs as well. Oh. And that big lovely thing, that would be a weed. Hmm. They like to sneak in there wherever. And some bumblebees. Echinacea's great. There's another blueberry. Yeah, I think I might have a little treat now that I've had breakfast. Oh. First raspberry of the year. So there we go. So I want you to know, not only do I grow amazing <laughs> tomatoes, I also grow amazing weeds. <laughs> and grass is mixing in with my flowers now. And for some reason, my Rebecca is just biting it early, but I have the most beautiful flocks growing back there. Yeah, what's with this? Uh, and the cute little butterfly. So then let's go over here. This is a volunteer, some kind of cherry. I'm sure I found a cherry tomato last year that um, had something wrong with it. So I chucked it this direction because last year this was nothing but a branch pile that needed to be burned. And now we have a beautiful, big, thriving uh, cherry tomato plant. This whole lovely row, these are all the raspberries and gooseberries that we moved from Jonathan's parents' house because they were moving. We're definitely gonna have some that are simply not going to make it, but who knows? There might be some life in the roots. We'll wait until next year to see. Oh, and look, <laughs> another tomato plant. Oh, and another tomato plant. There's some gooseberries. The gooseberries survived wonderfully. These are all berry plants that we moved uh, in the height of the heat. Um, that was beginning of July. It took us three days, and in most cases it took us gosh, um, at least 24, 36 hours to get them back into the ground. So we'll definitely lose some, but I think we'll be covered. <laughs> A new cherry tree. It definitely got eaten from the uh, Japanese beetles. That's all right. It's just cosmetic damage. No big deal. But this was the Black York cherry. This is the Bing. This was my Bing I really, really wanted. And because you have to have uh, two to get pollination. We also did this one. Also cosmetically damaged, but this is the Rainier cherry. So at some point they will be probably 15, 20 feet high. Provide some nice shade. And I have to go take a peek over here. It's my birthday surprise because they bloom in early August. Just in time for my birthday. Aww. So many pretty naked ladies. <laughs> That's what they're called, surprise ladies, naked ladies, because they are completely naked of any foliage. Aren't they great? All right, one more stop before I call this farm tour uh, complete for August 10th. This is one of the gooseberries that we dug up. And here's another one. Oh look, and some spring onions that the boys snuck in there. Uh, bigger gooseberry. Those are our originals, those two there. And look, another volunteer. Tomato plants everywhere. Oh, wow. Those are covered. So this is the aronia berry bush that we got. Wow. I'll have to look and see when it's, when they're supposed to be ripe. And see what we do with aronia berries. This is covered this year. I'm very, very pleased. Um, what do we do with aronia berries? I have no idea yet. I know you can dehydrate them, put them into baked goods, and that's all I know. And if, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. I'll have to read up on it. And then this is our grapevine. Goes all the way down there. I love taking grape leaves during spring when they're new and fermenting and putting them away to save for when we make Dolmas 
in winter. I don't know that the grapes are anywhere near close to being ready yet. Oh, actually there is some give to them. Well, I'll have to get some taste testers over here. We might have some harvesting to do of grapes. Okay, so there you go. I hope you got a good view of the garden. Um, it's the middle of August. It is going, summer season is pretty well. I think we hit the peak and we're headed down into fall. I've got lots of fall stuff. Um, yeah, about three inches tall. They're all inside, tucked away from the big, scary, nasty bugs. Uh, <laughs> we'll edit that out. Um, so they're inside, staying safe from all the big, nasty bugs. And they'll be out probably end of September. No, end of August, beginning of September is probably when I will go ahead and plant them out here. Um, it's pretty exciting. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. Um, any questions, ask. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you enjoyed the little tour of my little garden. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. We are in the midst of the sliding down slope of summertime uh, vegetables and we uh, will be planting fall stuff probably at the end of this month beginning of September and uh, yeah if you've got any questions go ahead and ask thanks for joining me for this video I know it was a long one and I hope you see us in the next one see you later